What's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another video. So today's the day we finally give some love to tactical weapons in Battlefield 2042 because a lot of creators including myself don't really approach this category as focused as assault rifles or SMGs. So we take a look at the best setup possible for every tactical weapon and hope you guys like this as it is the last episode of this video series and if you want to check out the other episodes the link to that is down in the description the best setup possible for every single weapon in battlefield 2042 can be found there so make sure to check that out as well also if you like this type of videos or you're into battlefield i do all kinds of videos from tips and tricks to news and updates around the battlefield franchise so you might want to consider subscribing to the channel it only takes one click and you won't miss out on the future videos so starting off with the first shotgun in the game and probably the most powerful one the mcs 880 this one is the everyday use shotgun, not only in close range, but even in medium range. Sometimes you might actually one shot people. That happens with the right ammo that I'll be sharing with you in just a few seconds. But overall, MCS is a multi use pump action heavy shotgun that triggers almost everyone against you. For attachments, starting off with muzzle. Only choice you have is the Type 4 heavy suppressor, and I don't really think that's the best choice because it reduces damage and you don't want that. You really don't want people to run away from you when using a pump action shotgun. So I believe you gotta just use factory barrel and move on. For under barrel, you only need an LS1 laser sight for more hip fire accuracy and that's it. You don't really have anything worthy apart from that. For ammo, you have some different types to choose from. First of all, slug is just crap because it can never one shot anyone. So that goes out of the equation. You have three different types of box shot rounds called number one, number four and number zero. Number 4 has the most amount of pellets, but it has a greater spread, which will annoy you in medium range. Number 1 Buckshot, however, provides a better and more balanced performance, and it will be the first choice for this setup. Slot 2 goes to Buckshot number 4, and lastly, for the third slot, Buckshot number 0 is the way to go. For weapon sights, it's just a matter of personal preference, but for me, a red dot sight is just enough for a shotgun, so the final setup is ready looking like this. Next up, we've got the Lever Action GVT 4570, and I just like to treat this weapon like a sniper rifle when it comes to attachments because it's gonna work out better since the shooting mechanism is almost the same. Some people use this thing as a compact and fast firing sniper rifle just because. So that's what we're dealing with when it comes to this weapon. And it's a one shot headshot kill weapon, so that's also a benefit for using this thing accurately. For muzzle, I'd go for champion muzzle break to lower that vertical recoil just a bit more. And I don't think having suppressors on a weapon like this is generally a good idea since muzzle velocity and damage both matter a lot in a weapon like this. So champion muzzle break and that's it. For under barrel, I'd go with BCG light grip because that's going to be how I treat a sniper rifle. You don't really need hip fire for this weapon and LWG grip takes away that standing while shooting accuracy that you sometimes really need with a sniper rifle. So BCG for the first slot and then a bipod for when you need some accurate shots in range. For ammo, I'd go with high power first and then standard issue because there is a big difference when it comes to fire rate between those ammo types and this weapon, but the damage gap between them is just insane and the high power outperforms standard issue easy peasy. For weapon sights, I'd prefer a red dot for close range, a ghost hybrid for medium range, and finally for long range, M11 6X would be a great choice. I don't have the attachments unlocked for this weapon, so we don't have the final setup pick, but you guys get the idea. Moving on to 12M Auto, the name says it all, it's a 12 gauge full auto shotgun made for extreme close range gunfights and this thing absolutely shreds the living life out of anyone in under 10 meters. Ridiculously strong this thing. For muzzle, I'd go for shortened barrel to get some more fire rate. For under barrel, the MGL laser sight is the way to go for less spread and more fire accuracy. Then for ammo, buckshot drum, then buckshot extended, and then buckshot. That should do the trick, and for weapon sights, a red dead sight is just enough, and the final setup should look like this. Next up, we've got the Ghostmaker R10. It really is a Ghostmaker. It's a one-shot kill weapon in under 30 meters, and it's just dead silent. Nobody knows where it came from when it comes to Ghostmaker, and the headshot multiplier is three times, meaning that every headshot is a kill regardless of range, so all in all, it is really a hard-hitting weapon. For muzzle, you don't have any attachments, so we skip that. However, for under barrel, Based on my own experience, the MGL laser sight sometimes gives away your location unintentionally and you might not want that in a weapon made for silence. Because of that, I'd stick to LWG grip most of the times and I find it really effective, so that's what I recommend. For ammo, standard bolt, then bolt track and then explosive bolt is fine. The explosive bolt deals damage to armor as well, you might want to know that. 
And for weapon sights, I'd go for a red dot for close range and then for medium range, a ghost hybrid is the best choice here. So the final setup should look like this. Next weapon is the Rosk MK4. This thing uses electromagnetic force to fire projectiles at super high speeds. That super high speed, guys, is 6,740 meters per second, making it the fastest muzzle velocity in a weapon in the whole entire Battlefield franchise. Bro, that's just ridiculous. Imagine something traveling in that speed. And that's why people usually use it as a sniper rifle. And God, this thing is just freaking unstoppable. No bullet drop, no anything. Just pure aim and shoot. Now for muzzle, you don't have any attachments, but for underbarrel, you get to choose the firing mode of the weapon. You can have single fire, burst fire, and full auto, and I prefer having the single fire first, then stream capacitor, and then burst capacitor. Again, for ammo, you don't get to choose, so we just leave it at that. And lastly, for weapon sights, a red dot sight for when people decide to push you, so you can switch to full auto and have a strong AR. But the second slot should go to the 2038 thermal six times. And lastly, the long shot 12x for those extreme long ranges. And the setup is ready looking like this. Last but not least, we've got the NVK S22, another full auto shotgun, but this one is not as popular as the 12M auto since it doesn't have a magazine and you should hand feed the weapon. Like put every single one of those shotgun shells in the weapon one by one. And that will make the reloading of this thing a little bit longer than you would expect. However, it recently got a nerf in that department and now reload speed is just a bit faster. Still not as fast nor practical as the 12M auto. With all that said for muzzle, I'd stick to factory barrel. The suppressor that we have here actually decreases damage and we don't really want that. For under barrel, as usual, we go for the MGL laser sight to get the extra hip fire accuracy. For ammo, buckshot and flechette should do the trick. Slug rounds are just useless and we forget about that entirely. For weapon sights, just go for a red dot and you should be good to go. With all that said, guys, this video comes to an end. Hope you guys enjoyed and hope it was helpful. If you want to see the previous episodes, make sure to check out the link down in the description to find your favorite weapon and its best setup. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, stay cool.